Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Epcot and we're going to be going around and trying more of the Food and Wine Festival. A lot of things that I haven't got to try yet and then also I want to revisit some of the things that I did get to try and give you guys kind of a my favorites list so you guys know what are the things that I actually like when it comes to Food and Wine Festival. And we're also going to ride some rides, maybe try to catch a show or two and just have a beautiful Epcot kind of day. Anywho, let's go do this. Today is August 3rd, so the festival has been going on for a couple weeks now And this is gonna be my second video for the food and wine festival the first video We got to try so many different food and wine menu items I think we tried 35 and today we're gonna to be focusing on some things that I didn't get to try and then also like I said Ranking and giving you guys a favorite list of mine it is also extremely hot out today. It says 93 degrees, but it feels like it's 102. So I got a nice little cloth here to kind of keep me dry and uh, we're gonna stay hydrated. That's the plan. I have to actually look and see who is playing for the Eat to the Beat concert lineup. I was hoping that we were in time to catch Joey Fatone and friends, which basically when they say friends, it's almost all of NSYNC, everyone except for Justin Timberlake. So I'm not too sure if that's today, but we're going to find out. I mean, that would be a really awesome show to watch. The Eat to the Beat concert series is so awesome here because sometimes you forget that they're actually doing it and you're walking around World Showcase and then you're like, oh, wait a second, that's Hanson or Boys to Men. And that has happened to me before. But also, I want to show you guys something so amazing that I noticed when I parked my car here today that I don't think, I think it's brand new. I don't think I've ever seen it before. I'm actually in a rental car right now, and when I was parking, uh, it gave me a notification to use Disney's new car locator. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. So I selected yes, and if you go in and you type car locator, it actually pops up like this for you. And you go and you select, and it saves everything for where you are. Like, you know how people take photos of the parking or the road that they're in? It does it for you automatically in the My Disney Experience app, and I had no idea. So I'm parked in Create Road 39. It uses the location service, and I think that is just so crazy. How have I never heard of this before? Let me know if you guys have ever heard of the car locator for the My Disney Experience app because that is the first time it has ever popped up for me, but I love it. It literally just popped up as soon as I parked and I selected like I'm here or whatever and uh, it just saved all my information. And I'm the one that's like used to taking a photo of the sign in the row, so that is so convenient. All right, enough of the car locator business. Now it's time to make our way into World Showcase, find our first food and wine booth, and get something to eat and something to drink. I'm very, very thirsty, and I'm not too sure which way to go. I think I'm actually going to go in the reverse direction that we should always go. I usually start over in Mexico, but I think I'm going to go in reverse, make our way towards Canada. For the record, I am team start on Mexico side, but today I just wanted to live a little dangerously and mix it up a little bit, switch things up. We're gonna start right here in Australia, and I wanna get the grilled sweet and spicy bushberry shrimp. This is one of my favorite things of the festival that they have almost every year. Uh, the first day that I came out, I got the lamington from here, and that was a really good dessert. I liked it a lot, but I didn't get to try anything else, so I feel like this is a strong start. It's served with pineapple, pepper, onion, and snap peas, and I'm all about the shrimp, especially the shrimp in business. Another thing that I really want to do today is kind of put together a top five food items that I enjoyed from the Food and Wine Festival and I'll go through those at the end of the video. That way I can give you a breakdown but I wanted to do one whole lap around and at least get something from every single booth before I made that list. That's why we're out here going for round two. And take a look at these precious beauties. I love shrimp. I've been on a shrimp kick recently and these look so good. I am so pumped. They look so amazing. And I like to see a little bit of those snap peas and pineapples and peppers in there. I mean, this is a really good combination, but I think we just need to dive into it because I'm getting very hungry just looking at it. All right, here we go. We're diving in. And uh, like I said, I am so impressed with these shrimp. Look at them, they're massive. We're gonna take the tail out right here. Look at that, it actually just pulls right out. All the meat comes right out of the tail. I love that. But here we go. Yes, you could have. Wow. 
it's not that spicy like i know it's a little sweet and spicy and i thought it would be fun like when it comes to boots uh i'll tell you which one i liked more so like australia i had the lamington and i had this shrimp here and i have to say i would go with the shrimp i mean i would take the shrimp over the lamington any day like that is phenomenal and I'm basically just saying that on the shrimp alone. I didn't even touch the pineapple or peppers. And also I have a fork in my pocket. I have a fork in my pocket. <laughs> but now we're gonna grab some of these snap peas and some pineapples and peppers. Give them a bite too. Oh yeah, $6.50 for this. You get three gigantic shrimp and all that any day. All right, I officially can say I think we're off to a great start. The shrimp in Australia was phenomenal, and I would get it over the Lamington any day. But something I wanted to point out to you guys that's really, really cool, if you're trying to get a lot of food and wine done, over here by Canada, they have three different places right next to each other. You have Refreshment Port, Canada, and then the Appleseed Orchard right there. And you can literally just knock all three of them out in like under five, ten minutes. I do have to say though, I feel like Canada's menu is very small this year. In fact, for food, they only have the uh, cheese, uh, the cheddar and bacon soup, and then they have the filet, which is always on the menu. And that's it for food items. But you can kind of count the refreshment port because the refreshment port has the braised uh, beef uh, poutine. So you can kind of count that into Canada, even though it's a little French. But uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I've had both of those items. I'm not gonna get them today, but I would definitely get the filet over the soup only because I'm a big filet fan. As I was walking through Canada, I did want to point out that they had a special food and wine photo opportunity over here that actually is really nifty. I like this. It comes out like little Polaroids and it has this background. And are these are the food items? I think that is like the, the uh, poutine and stuff like that. So that's really, really cool. I got it actually. So if uh, it comes in in time, I'll add it in right now so you can see what it's like. I'm getting so excited because one of the coolest things is happening. They like to call it Character Palooza, and we're gonna catch it actually. Look at this. I get so excited when I see this. Oh, Captain Hook is out, Tigger, Rafiki. Oh, this is so awesome. I see Pluto in the back there, and you can go and just take your photos with everyone. This is the best ever. I love coming upon this. Much too good. Whenever this does happen, because it does happen pretty much randomly, uh, it gets very busy very quick and you can line up to meet some of your favorite characters. So I think I'm gonna do Captain Hook and Smee because you get to do them together. Like, so you get two character meet and greets for one. So we're gonna hop in line to meet them. Oh, you got the fabulous Captain Hook. Oh, Captain Hook is here. I'm very excited to see you. Yes, I am, I am, you're one of my favorites. I do. I, I try to grow my mustache like yours, but it never works out well. Yeah, because we have the same little like separation part right there. But I got a nice little beard. I love it. Well, I'm very excited to see you here at Epcot. And uh, I seen Smee, but Smee had to leave. He had to go swab the deck. Is that what was going on? Oh, poor Smee. I feel... Oh, oh. <laughs> Just like that. Wow. Get, get, go on, get Smee. Well, can we do a photo? Yeah? Oh, awesome. <laughs> Oh, look it, I just walked away and Smee's back now. Justin, oh, look at that. He's back from swogging, swogging the deck. Swogging the deck. <laughs> I can't believe I missed Smee just by a second, but I think we're gonna try to uh, meet Rafiki real quick and see if we have time, because I know he's gonna show me the way. Rafiki will show you the way. A santi sana, squash banana. You are my favorite, thank you so much, Rafiki. I'm happy that I'm able to catch you and come say hello. Yes? Awesome. Would you uh, mind if we took a photo together? Yeah? All right, I'm ready. Hold on. <laughs> okay. See you next time, Wendell. Have fun. Thank you. I got, I got to try one of your bear claws. It was delicious. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that awesome? It looks like they're all done for the day. How cool is this? And it's kind of just like practice for the characters, you know, because meeting and greeting guests is actually, you know, something that takes skill, so you need some practice with it. But it'll happen a couple of times throughout the day in different locations, and it's kind of, like I said, random. They don't announce when they do it. It's not something planned. And I'm so happy I got to show you it today. 
Now we've made our way over to Ireland. And last time I was here, I got this warm chocolate pudding cake with Irish cream liqueur in it. And I gotta say that was phenomenal. It was so delicious. And I have had the roasted Irish sausage before. Uh, and it's pretty good, but I haven't had it this year. So I might actually think about getting that or the fisherman seafood pie. Ooh, actually I might try the fisherman seafood pie and compare it to the warm chocolate pudding cake. I feel like that would be a good, uh, that'd be a good test. All right, now it's time for the fisherman's seafood pie. And I have to say, the picture, I mean, it looks a lot different on a picture than it does like this. It's just mashed potatoes on top. So I really don't know what's under there. You know what I mean? But like on the picture, it had like the shrimp all hanging out and it looked all beautiful. But we're gonna, we're gonna dive in here. We're gonna give it a go. I feel like I should at least show you guys when I break into it. I wonder if the top is soft or if it's hard. We're gonna find out in a second. Oh, it's, it's actually pleasantly soft. I thought it was gonna be a little bit crunchy and hard, but I'm gonna lift up. Oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the world's tiniest shrimp. It's so funny because we just went from Australia's gigantic shrimp to like this very very tiny shrimp i mean it's it's funny but all right i'm gonna put my little shrimp in there get a big spoonful i don't know i don't think i'm gonna like this guys i don't know we're gonna find out here mm, i don't like it <laughs> i feel like if you had to choose between getting this and any of the other items it would be such a letdown because that uh, chocolate cake is so good and the sausage is not that bad and this like all of the shrimp like oh my god look at it. it's like very tiny baby 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 shrimp in there and yeah it's just not my thing it's not my bag it's not my bag of chips or it's not my shepherd's pie I guess lesson learned if you're ever at the Ireland booth definitely get the warm chocolate pudding cake just get it just get it you won't you won't be disappointed in fact, I think I'm going to correct my mistake and just go back and get the warm chocolate pudding cake so I can try it right now. I loved it. It was so good. I had it the first day and it's definitely on my favorites list. And uh, since we really didn't like that fisherman seafood pie, why not? Look at that. You made my day with that. Thank you so much. <laughs> I feel like I have officially corrected the Ireland booth. I mean, I had this last time, so this is a revisit to one of my favorites, but it is so good. And make sure you can get some extra sauce on there. That's what you gotta ask for. Seriously though, watch this, watch this. Oh, it is so amazing. Gotta scoop it all up, get it all on there, both sides. Both sides. Amazing. Wow. Now we got to keep moving along through World Showcase, but I'm happy that we went back for that warm pudding cake. It was so good. I think I'm going to skip over France because that always has such a long line. I've had the creme brulee from there before and it was pretty good, but I didn't really think I seen anything else I liked. So we're just going to go to the next booth right afterwards. We have successfully made our way over to the Brazil booth and I want to actually get the feijoada which actually it looks really good and I don't even know if I pronounced that right. I think I did a pretty good job there and it comes with black beans with crispy pork belly, Brazil nut pesto and then Ben's original long grain white rice. But also I want to try this black lager down here. So a little Brazilian beer with some Brazilian food. I think that sounds like a good idea. The best thing about Brazil is Belgium is right next door so we can get something from Brazil and then Belgium bang 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 just like that big de bang All right, so let's dive on in. I got a wobbly table here though. You see that tables wobbly It's gonna be tough to eat. So I might have to fix it Luckily, I've been collecting these food and wine passports So we're gonna fix this wobbly table in no time I'm gonna just take this like this stick it under there there we go. Let's test it out now. Solid. Perfect. All right, first things first, the Brazilian black lager here. Thank you. Hey. Oh, that's pretty good. It's actually not a bad lager. 
one. Yeah, I just don't like these cups. They like switched out the cups and it's like little tiny, I don't know, you guys know what I'm talking about, but the lager's not that bad. Now let's dive into this bad boy. And this pork belly looks pretty good. I'm gonna, I got two forks. I got two forks, no knives. So I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna push this this way. It kind of looks like little hands, doesn't it? Like, boop, 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 boop. But <laughs> I don't even know why I do the things I do. But anyway, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fork it and then pull it. I don't know if this is gonna work in my favor right here. Oh yeah, this might work. Oh yeah, there we go, okay. We gotta grab some of this Ben's rice there, some beans, a little bit of everything in one bite. There we go, I do love pork belly, so I'm excited. And the black beans in here, a little bit of everything. Mmm. That is actually really good. I really, really like this. And when it comes to Brazil, they have the cheese bread. And I'm not the biggest fan of that, but I know a lot of people really do like it. So if I was to give you guys like a pick of what I like, I would say I'd go with this, but the more popular vote definitely would be the cheese bread. Definitely go with the cheese bread if you like cheese and bread combination. I think that's the big seller here today. But this is actually not that bad. And I wish that I had a knife because now it looks like I got chopsticks out of my forks. Like, look at the way I'm holding this right now. What's happening? What's going on in my life? <laughs> I do want to point out my favorite thing on this whole entire dish though is probably this pesto. The pesto is phenomenal. And just like I said before, right next to Brazil is Belgium. So we're gonna grab something from here. And I believe the last time we were here, we had the Belgian waffles. We got both the berry and the chocolate, and they were phenomenal. So this time I think I'm gonna get the beer braised beef with smoked Gouda mashed potatoes and the chilled coffee. Comes with uh, Godiva chocolate liqueur in it. Little, little fanciness there. First things first is gonna be the chilled coffee. And it's melting so fast because it's so hot out. But I can go for a little coffee right now. I wish I could have gotten without the Godiva chocolate liqueur, but I don't think you can. I would have just gotten coffee, actually. Ooh, that's good. I honestly don't taste much coffee in there or liqueur. I kind of think the water and the ice just kind of melted it down and it was $11. This is the most expensive thing I bought at the festival so far. And here is the beer braised beef. Kind of looks like Denny Moore, just without much chunks. Little tiny bits of carrots and smoked gouda mashed potatoes under there. I mean, I'm gonna give it a go, but I can't imagine this being better than the waffles. If I would have picked between the waffles, I would definitely go with, I think, the berry waffles. I think I had the chocolate ones, and they were really good, but I think the berry one was my favorite. But let's just dive in here a little bit. I see one big chunk of beef right here, but that's about it. I think there's another piece right here. And then there's smoked gouda mashed potatoes underneath it. So you gotta get a little bit of everything all in one bite. So here we go. Beef's up. Oh, that's good. Honestly, it tastes very, very good. The flavor is excellent. I just wish like there were bigger chunks of like carrots and meat in there. I feel like literally two little things like that is a little disappointing, but this is actually good. This is very delicious. The mashed potatoes are good. It tastes better than Denny Moore. And uh, I would get it again, but I don't think I would get it over the waffles. Like if I had to choose, I'd be all about the waffles. Solely because you only get like two pieces of meat and very tiny carrots. If it was loaded, I might be all on board for it, but I'm already done. Like, look at this. I'm already done. All right, now it's time we have to get moving along. But the question is, do I leave the passports there? Is it littering if I do that? Do you know what I mean? If I, if I move it, then the table's not going to be fixed anymore. And someone's going to come over to a wobbly table. I don't know what to do. I kind of feel... I feel bad. I don't know. I feel, I feel torn. Now up next is going to be Taste of Morocco. And they got Sangria Sips and then the Tangerine Cafe here. So I think we might grab something from either one of them. I have to scope it out. This is one of the ones I didn't get to go to on opening day. So I'm excited. Oh, I'm pretty positive Jasmine is just walking around all here too. Well, that was kind of nifty. I don't know where she went to though. Oh, hi Jasmine. <laughs> what is so... <laughs> I don't even know what's happening right now. Is she hiding from Aladdin? I kind of just keep peeking around because I'm like, whoa, what's happening here? Oh, look at her. 
She's just strolling around Morocco. I love that. That is cool. I absolutely love the fact that Jasmine is just walking around the Morocco pavilion. She has a little girl. She's giving her like the grand tour and she's hiding in like little nooks. That is amazing. It gives me Disneyland vibes. Look at this. That is just so amazing. Seriously, when you see things like that, it really makes Disney like such a magical place, I feel like. I think that is so awesome. But here is a look at the Morocco uh, Tangerine Cafe here. Flavors of the Midian. And I have to say, one of my all-time favorite things is this pistachio cake right here. I love it so much. I get it every year because I love it so much. And it has cinnamon, paste, cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon pastry cream and candied walnuts. And it's $4.75 and it has this beautiful chocolate piece on top. So I think I'm going with it just because I love it. I didn't have anything else. And if anything, it's going to be that. And take a look at this. Here it is. The pistachio cake. Now this is on the menu almost I think every food and wine. But it is just a solid go-to. I love it so much. It's almost so pretty I don't want to I don't want to destroy it. And this cake is thick. Like this is a thick cake I have to say. So we're going to kind of save the chocolate for later. I'm going to just go right down the side here. There we go. Got to get make sure we get that, that uh, cinnamon and walnuts. This is honestly so good. Oh, it landed on the plate. Everything is good in the world, but I almost lost it. But this is honestly so good. Mm. Seriously, this is one of my favorite desserts. It's definitely gonna be making my top five uh, desserts at the festival, definitely. And also, this is my third Dasani. Like, it is so hot out today. So, so hot out. All right, time to keep moving along. We're going through Japan, and we're moving pretty fast today. We're getting a lot done. I'm not stopping at every booth, just basically the ones I haven't eaten at yet, or the ones that I really love something from. It looks like there's a thunderstorm in the area, so I think I want to rush over to Italy because I don't want that booth to close because I didn't get to eat anything from there last time because of a thunderstorm. So we're going to rush along. I think they're closing up Japan already though, so hopefully not. Fingers crossed. I was hoping for Joey Fatone tonight, but it looks like I missed him. Uh, tonight is Element. Yesterday was Tiffany though. We could have saw Tiffany. And then you can see Joey Fatone and Friends, Christopher Cross, Journey, Air Supply. I want to come see Air Supply. 98 Degrees, Hoobastank, Jimmy Allen. There's a lot of great bags uh, here. A lot of great shows coming up. Hanson. Oh yeah. I would have been very excited to see Joey Fatone. I mean, I get into all types of music, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll have to keep our eye out. He's coming, I think, tomorrow, they said. Or, yeah, or the next day. It's the 5th and the 6th. But there's a lot of good ones. I want to see Hoobastank. I love Hoobastank, and uh, 98 Degrees would be fun. Jimmy Allen. There's, a, there's a, like I said, a very good list. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. The Italy booth closed. I missed it. Look at that. It's shut down because of the thunderstorm that's in the area there. Every time, I tell you. Every time. And I think Germany might be closed, too. Wow, I can't believe this happens to me. Always when I get here, too. Like, I'm all good, and it's only going to be like this for a little bit. But we'll see how long it takes. I was really hoping on getting to the Italy booth. I can't believe this happened again. It was the only booth I have not tried yet, like out of all of them. And I would have been able to say I've eaten at every single booth for Food & Wine 2022. That's open right now because you know there's a lot more opening up, but I can't believe I missed it. Oh my lord, I have to tell you guys about a little magic moment here, I feel like. So, as you guys know, I was running over here because I really wanted to get something from Italy. And I was going to go with one of the Nokis because they have uh, two different selections of it. But the booth is closed because there's lightning in the area. But one of the uh, coordinators heard me say, dang it, I missed it. And they came out and they brought me the panna cotta. Look at this. They actually brought it out for me and said, I'm so sorry you missed us. And it's an orange blossom with seasonal berries. So I feel honored. Now I at least get to say that I got to try it. I got to try something from Italy. Seriously though, how nice is that? So we're going to give it a go. And also, I think I got a little hit of Mickey action happening there. Here we go. 
Mmm. This is really, really good. Yeah, I like the little crunchy pearls. Ooh. I hear the thunder. Lightning, I mean. Oh, no, thunder. I like this. You can really, really, really taste that orange blossom in there. This is very delicious. And a lot of people knock the Italy booth, but I've heard good things about this year. But in the past, it has not been the best booth to actually come to. So I'm glad that they're getting better. Well, there you have it. Now I can officially say I've eaten at every single booth for Food & Wine 2022 as of today because we still have Hawaii, Mac and Eats, and a lot of other booths opening up. But that's not for a little bit longer, but at least now I can say it. Right next to Italy is Spain, and they have one of my all-time favorite items here. I love this. It is so good, and it is the paella with rice, chorizo, and shrimp. And they're actually shut down a little bit. They're actually taking orders right here, so they have this closed down because of weather. So I'm going to get my paella. I'm going to get my paella. Here it is, the paella, and I love this. I love this and i think we're gonna get poured on because the lightning and thunder just keep on getting a little bit more intense and i feel some raindrops but we're diving in this is this might this honestly might top my list first of all you get all of this shrimp you get three gigantic big pieces of shrimp then you get at least three or four pieces of chorizo and then the rice this is uh, this is this is all that this is a great great deal it's also only $6.25, and uh, the reason I'm probably going to like this more than the spicy uh, shrimp over in Australia is because you get the chorizo with it too, and it's the same price, but the shrimps are about the same uh, size. They have different seasoning on them. Uh-oh, there's some lightning. So we're going to dive in here. Wow. Much too good. Now we got to try some of the paella with the sausage. Oh boy. The raindrops are coming. The thunder. Everything's happening so fast. We got no time. That's amazing. Uh-oh. Okay. We have to seek shelter. We have to seek shelter. All right. We made it to somewhere where we have a little coverage on us so we can finish our paella. But seriously, it started raining so fast. That's just kind of how it is. It turns on and turns off here in Florida instantly. But I'm so happy I got this. This is definitely top of the list right here. Also, I do want to point out that there is like zero spice to this because it looks like it's spicy and even when you say paella, I feel like people think it's spicy, but no spice, just deliciousness. The shrimp is perfectly seasoned, the chorizo is amazing. The chorizo might have a little tiny, but like I can't, I can't taste any spice, but I love it. It's actually raining still just a little bit, but I feel like we can take advantage of that and actually be able to get uh, like through the lines a little bit faster. So I'm going to keep moving along. Up next is Germany, and they have the roasted bratwurst served on a pretzel roll, but they also have the apple strudel served with vanilla sauce. And the strudel, I feel like, is the same one that they have in the beer garden, which is amazing. And I'm really thinking about getting both of them. Like, I'm thinking about getting both of them or the pineapple Hefeweizen, the Schoffenhofer pineapple. Now, they had, like, a, a cherry one, and then, of course, everyone loves the grapefruit one, but pineapple sounds fancy. And I always suggest if you get the apple strudel, ask for extra vanilla sauce. Trust me, it just makes it so much better. And here is the apple strudel. Look at all of the vanilla sauce they gave me. They loaded it up. Like, it's so heavy. The, the plate is like tilting that way. And like I said, I'm pretty positive it's the same one that you get in the beer garden, but I'm here for it. I mean, at least I don't have to pay like the $50 price tag. And then I also got the brat. Had to try the brat. I wanted to get the pineapple beer, but they closed the beer down because of the lightning. So we're going to try them both. First things first, let's go brat. And the pretzel roll is actually really hard. It's not soft. So don't be thinking you're going to get like a soft. It's actually got a little crunch to it. Did you hear that crunch? So we're going to dive in here. Mmm. I feel like the brat is very thin. Look at that, it's like a breakfast sausage almost, and the ratio is just not happening. And it would be better if the pretzel roll was soft, but it had definitely a little hardness to the side of it. I mean, it's okay, but I, I don't think it's the best thing. I think I would just stick to the strudel next time. You know what I mean? Just go with the strudel. 
And speaking of the strudel, we got to dive in here. I don't even know what I can do to actually move this so that I can get the vanilla sauce on it. I guess I can scoop it on there. Look at it. <laughs> there we go. Just scoop it all on there. You gotta need that. You need to have it on both sides. That's the that's the point of the extra vanilla sauce. And then we're gonna cut through, use our cutting skills with our fork that we learned today. Get some more of that vanilla sauce. There we go. And it's a perfect bite. Oh nope, a little more, a little more stabbing. There we go. That's the way. Here we go. A perfectly covered apple strudel in vanilla sauce. Oh, I love it. Honestly, I would put this in my top five list, but I feel like it shouldn't count because it's available here all the time at the beer garden. You know what I mean? So like, I can't really put it up there. That doesn't mean I don't love it though. Even though it's not gonna be on the top five list, like I said, it's just a technicality. It's still absolutely amazing. Now it looks like the rain has stopped and we can continue on moving around World Showcase, but we're almost all done here. We're actually almost all finished. To be honest, I'm starting to get a little bit full and I don't think I'm gonna be eating at any more boots because I've already eaten at all these ones over here. So I think maybe I will break down my top five list like for you guys now. And I have really thought about this. Like now that I've officially eaten at every single stand, uh, it was really hard to come up with like, you know, a top five between my first day and today's video. <laughs> and I would have to say at number five would be the sticky ribs at the Swanky Saucy Swine. I really did like those a lot. Number four, or would be Australia with the sweet and spicy shrimp. I, I love those shrimps, they were fantastic. Number three would be the pudding cake in Ireland. That was absolutely phenomenal. Number two would be the pistachio cake in Morocco. I think you guys seen that coming. And then number one, the shrimp paella. The paella in Spain was phenomenal with the chorizo. I just had it and I love it. It is so good and the price value is just there for me. Uh, Worst thing I've eaten probably, uh, it's tough. The fisherman's, the seafood uh, pie was a little, the fisherman's seafood pie was a little, uh, but I mean, I'm good with that top five. I feel good about it. So now I think I'm just gonna streamline it out to the front of the park, kind of get out of World Showcase and make my way to the exit. And with that, I think we are done here today. It's been a very long day. The heat is getting to me. Now that it rained a little bit, it is extra humid out. And uh, I think I just want to head on home. Yeah, I wanted to ride some rides, but I think I just eaten too much food. I don't normally eat all the food. I just sample it, but it does catch up to you. And also I want to say thank you guys for all the messages about my car and everything like that. Thank you guys so much. I mean, the love and support that you guys give me is absolutely amazing honestly and I don't normally talk about things like I said uh, yesterday I was just really feeling it you know watching that sunset and I felt like I needed to let you guys know how much I appreciate you and how much I appreciate the the ability to make these videos and how much it means to me and every once in a while you need to share that you need to share that out in the world you need to tell people how much you appreciate them and I appreciate you guys you guys help me so much more than you guys think that I can help you and uh, everything is going well just waiting for the insurance company and you know figuring it out that's what insurance is for that's what it's for so it's just gonna let it do its thing and uh, yeah gonna keep on making videos so I hope you guys enjoyed this one thank you so much again Honestly, I feel so loved from all of you and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye! Also, I'm pretty sure the car locator is supposed to send me a notification once I've reached the parking lot to remind me where I parked at and I'm waiting for that to happen. Look at that. As soon as I got into the parking lot, it let me know. Car locator, ready, park, go. And then there it is, Road 39 and Create. How awesome is that? This is such a cool thing.